Hey there, it is Friday, it's cozy reading night. Uh, I just got home from the office, uh, had a really good day at work, signed a new client, working on um, a new product and stuff, so good stuff. And I am ready to change my clothes, get into comfy stuff, and uh, snuggle up and read. I did not make my bed today. There it is, it's a mess, there's a dog on it. So I think I'm gonna do is grab something to eat, grab something to drink, and then I have Sherlock Holmes, um, The Hound of the Baskervilles, and I'm like 75% or, so, or so through that. So I think I want to finish that tonight. And then I'm also listening to Thursday's Gone by Nikki French. So I'll be listening to that while I like get dressed and get myself situated. And then I'm going to finish The Hound of the Baskervilles. And then, oh, I have Pages and Co. What's the second one? Uh, Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales? Yeah. Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales. Uh, Holly and I are buddy reading this, um, this month. So, yeah, that is probably what I do, what, what I'll do. And I think I'm just gonna retire to the bedroom for the night after I eat. Is this cozy and Christmassy enough for a Christmas cozy reading night? I hope so. So I finished The Hound of the Baskervilles. Really good. Is the first Sherlock Holmes novel I've ever re ever read. I've read many of the short stories, um, but yeah, this was the first novel. There's a legend: the Baskervilles is a family. They live in the uh, on the moors, and there's a legend of this great hellhound. And it's multiple generations later, and Holmes and Watson get get. Um, get into this case basically the most recent you know owner uh baskerville has has died it seems to be that he died um uh, like of fright from encountering the hound of the baskervilles and his i think it's his nephew um like long lost nephew uh who lives in america is the heir and so he's coming back but you know he feels like he's going to be in grave danger so Sherlock sends Watson on to uh, kind of the estate, the Baskerville estate, um, with uh, Sir Henry. Sir Henry? Yeah. Sir Henry, the, the heir. And then basically a good portion of the book, like the whole middle of the book, is Watson. Watson's always telling the story, but Watson is like relaying the events, um, and anything that he's found out to Sherlock. Um, and then, uh, toward the end, Sherlock comes, comes back and, you know, we kind of get like the final, the final bit. Um, and so actually that was kind of like the last, um, that last 60 pages or so that I just read, um, had to do with basically the figuring out you know the the whole who done it and how done it and all that kind of stuff um so yeah really really quite fun what's what's kind of surprising um about about any of the the Sherlock Holmes books I've never read any other Sir Arthur Conan Doyle um I was trying to say Conan like Doyle Arthur Conan Dole I don't know anyway is it it does not feel Victorian. It is Victorian, but it doesn't feel like it. And um, it's just very uh, readable, not necessarily modern writing, but also not not difficult, not like antiquated or anything like that. So and now for something completely different. T uh, Pages and Co. Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales. Um, I had just just started this um, let's see, I'm on page, well, I guess I'm a little further than I thought. I'm on page 56. I started this, I think, last night. So I'm already quite tired. Um, I just watched a, uh, a booktube video, sometimes, you know, watching basically blue light from the screen kind of messes up your sleep cycle, essentially. Um, so, but it can be, it can be a useful tool when you're trying to stay up to read. So, I mean, it's only like 9.15, but... I'm usually like going to sleep right now, if not already asleep. So we'll see how long um, I make it here in Pages and Co. I finally warmed up. That was the thing. I've been like freezing. Um, I've got like my uh, hood, not my hood, but like my collar up. I had a scarf on a little while ago. I've had this blanket like up over me, like a, um, what are those things called? Like a Snuggie. 
Um, and I'm finally like feeling okay. It was also helping that I've got a doggy here with some body heat helping me out. But anyway, I'm going to crack on with this and um, I'll probably read, be reading this in the morning as well. I'll probably also start another mystery. I'm not sure what it'll be yet. All right, out for a walk with the dog and listening to, come on, and looking to, li uh, yeah, listening to Thursday's Gone by Nikki French. So the fourth book in the series, and in this one, um, there there's a plot line involving uh, Frida Klein that that goes through the whole uh, the whole series like in the background. And, but every book, there's a different mystery as there is, or crime, as there is in any like crime or mystery novel. And in this one in particular, though, we're really going back into her backstory. And particularly something that happened in her past has kind of come up in uh, the present day, uh, which involves the current crime. It's really, really good. So we're just gonna finish up this walk. We're almost back home. Um, and then I'm gonna read a bit more of Pages & Co before um, I settled down to do some work, um, but I'm not quite ready to get into work mode yet. But as far as Pages & Co goes, I don't think I've talked anything about this one. So it's the second book in this series and, and Tilly and her, her grandparents are book wanderers. She lives with her grandparents and uh, in uh, above a bookshop that they own. And uh, they can basically go into stories and, and characters from stories come out. So Anne Shirley from Anne of Green Gables um, is is often in the book and the way Anna writes Anne's dialogue is just spot on. I love it. Um, the scene that Anne was just in, um, she shows up and she's sitting there on the couch in the bookshop with um, with Tilly and uh, and she has green hair and um, so she's you know the only thing worse than having having orange hair is having green hair and Tilly suggests then maybe she should cut it. And she says, well, what would be worse, worse than having green hair would be having short green hair. Um, and Tilly and we, of course, know that Anne does end up cutting her hair short. But anyhow, it starts off, the first few chapters starts off pretty kind of like political with the underlibrary stuff and kind of the nefarious goings on and, and like the, um, it kind of sets up like a, a, a down with the man kind of system. Um, they're kind of uh, stemming from the events from the, the end of the last book. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. Um, so it, that, that part of it, like the political machinations thing is not my favorite part, but now that we're back with just like the main characters, Tilly and her friend Oscar uh, and her grandparents, uh, that's the part that I am really into. And it's exactly where we are in the story. So I'm going to read on a bit. I think I'm about 75, 80 pages or so into it at the moment. Welcome. So we're going to go warm up and read. Saturday evening now. I'm right about halfway through the Lost Book of Fairy Tales, or the, Tilly in the Lost Fairy Tales. And Tilly is in a conundrum right now where you ever, you know, you're like reading in a book and you just feel so like almost desperate for the character because you don't know like how are they going to get out of this jam. So I'm feeling that for Tilly right now. Um, you know, it's a middle grade book and you just blaze right through it. Um, so I've actually was, was reading something else for work today and did some other work today and that kind of stuff. But I'm going to finish the evening off by see how much, see how much of a dent I can make in this. And then hopefully I'll finish it by tomorrow, if not tonight. It's Sunday morning now. I'm ready to finish Tilly in the Book of Lost Fairy Tales. I keep adding the word book. Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales. Um, I forgot to mention, I think before, that this is actually set at Christmas. So it starts like a few days before Christmas and then um, Tilly and Oscar end up getting to go to Paris and spending a few the few days before Christmas 
in Paris with his uh, dad and stepmom. And of course they get into some sort of an adventure there and it's related to the to the rest of the the rest of the story. Um, and so, and there also is a bit of a mystery. So it kind of fits in with Cloak and Dagger Christmas, um, kind of as in any, it's more of an adventure story than it is a mystery, but kind of at the heart of any adventure, there's gotta be some mystery, right? So um, I've got, I don't know, about 50 pages to go. So I'm gonna sit here with my coffee and my book snuggled up before I actually go out for a very chilly hike in a couple hours. I'm excited to finish this because I'm really loving it, but also to then get into my next mystery. What will it be? I'm not even sure yet. Very, very good. Also totally sets up book three, which I can't wait for. I have no idea when that actually comes out, but uh, I love the way that Anna writes it, uh, these stories because it feels very, it just feels very real. The dialogue, especially with the kids, the things they talk about, uh, feels very real. And there's definitely elements of, of what's happening in real life um, mirrored in the book as far as, uh, as government and kind of the opposite ends of the spectrum of, of, uh, like extreme regulations, government overreach, and then like no regulations, complete freedom to do whatever you want. Um, and what happens when those extreme ends of the, of the, of the spectrum are at odds with each other? Um, very, very good. Um, Holly, my niece, is supposed to be reading this as well, so I'm not sure how far she is into it, but I look forward to having a discussion with her about that, and maybe we'll, maybe we'll do that in front of the camera as well. So now, ugh, I'm going to choose between Heaven My Home by Attica Locke. This is the sequel to Bluebird Bluebird the Darren Matthews, Texas Ranger, and Louise Penny, How the Light Gets On, book nine in the Armand Gamache series. And although this is shorter by a good measure and tempting, it's also in Texas. And I don't know what time of year this one, it doesn't say in particular as I skim it, that it happens at any particular time of year, but this looks nice and wintry. And I just feel like, although these aren't technically cozy mysteries, it's like kind of straddles the line between literary and cozy mystery. Um, and it's wintry. So I think this is where I'm going to go next. What time is it? 8.19. I think I might kind of get prepared, prepare myself for the rest of my day. Um, uh, get dressed and get myself packed up for uh, my hike I'm doing with my friend later. So I have that, I just, all I have to do is, is leave when it's time to go um, and then start with this. Sunday evening now. Um, got back from my hike a little bit and I've just been doing kind of some stuff around the house and I haven't taken a shower yet. So I still have some serious uh, like hat head going on. So I'll just leave the hood on for now. But on my way up driving to the hike, I finished Thursday's Children. That's the name of that book. Um, the Free to, the next in the Free to Klein series. Really, really good. They just, I think they continue to get better each one. 
So, you know, I can't really talk about the fourth in a series um, other to, other than to, to say that I recommend this series in and of itself. So Fried Klein is a psychotherapist in London and um, she has kind of a complicated personal past kind of, um, you know, she's, she's a therapist a lot with a lot of her own issues. Um, and she kind of has a, she's this difficult relationship with her actual family, but she has this really great kind of found family. And they're always a big part of, of the story. And then there's, um, she in, in previous books in the first few books, she got kind of wrapped up in some police investigations, um, has, has become a part of that. So <clears throat> for a time she was like kind of consulting, uh, with the police and investigating some crimes. And, um, that's not really the case in this one, but, but the relationship with, uh, with, a, with, his title is inspector. So I don't, I don't know if that's like the equivalent of detective in the States, inspector Carlson. Um, they become friends. So he, he is involved, um, in it. Um, but she ends up having to go back to her hometown. Um, and, and so a lot of her past comes up. And so a lot of her backstory kind of becomes, um, enlightened. Um, and I don't want to say, I don't want to say too much, but it's just, it's really good, and she's a wonderfully flawed character who you don't always agree with her life choices, um, but still absolutely love and root for. So, yeah, that was a really great, another great installment um, by Nikki French. Oh, the other thing, so I've only ever listened to them as audiobooks, and I've never noticed this before, but you know how sometimes when you start an audiobook, there'll be a different voice that kind of introduces um the book other than the actual narrator so like you know this is a production of penguin random house blah 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 okay so that voice both at the beginning and the end instead of nikki french he said nichi french it's a double c so i could kind of see that but if it was nichi would it be nichi like I don't know. I haven't I haven't looked it up or anything like that, but now it's it's bugging me how to actually say her name. So um as I settle down for the evening, I'm gonna go ahead and start um How the Light Gets In by Louise Penny. Um we are back in Three Pines, the last book. We are not in Three Pines, so this is exciting to get to to get to go back to Three Pines and um, just more of Armand Gamache and then um, our, our Three Pines cast. Probably this book and A Christmas Carol might be my last books of the month. So we'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog here. I'll be starting on this one um, th tonight and um, that'll probably take me through the, the rest of the year. So thank you for watching. What are you reading? Do you have any particular Christmas reads? The only thing that I have that's particularly Christmassy is I'm going to read A Christmas Carol. But I also just don't really read, like, genres that really lend themselves to, like, Christmas books. Other than the occasional um, mystery that happens to be at a Christmas. And it was just really just by chance. I didn't realize that the Pages & Co. book that I just finished this morning actually took place at Christmas. Um, I just wanted to read that. Um, a nice adventure middle grade seems uh, seemed like a nice one to read. Um around Christmas time and it just happened to take place at Christmas time as well. So anyway, thank you for watching. See you around the tubes.